Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the tracker. Now, Resolve has undoubtedly one of the finest trackers in the world, but what do you do when things don't quite go to plan? I'm going to show you how to fix those tracks that didn't quite work as you expected. So let's go and take a look. So this shot is taken from an actual commercial I graded a few years ago. And what we're going to do is look at this particular shot here. Now I'm going to go into enhanced viewer mode, which is Alt F. And that gives us a bigger view to look at when we're looking at the tracking. And I'm just going to bring the nodes back on by clicking up here. So we can see now we've got uh, four nodes here. This one is actually a compound node. So it actually contains a lot of nodes uh, to get the grade to this point. So if I just press Command D, that's the original camera raw footage and that's with the grade so far but there's a couple of things we want to do to this shot so I'm just going to play it through and you see it's a tracking shot and there's quite a bit going on in there so we've got a lot of people crossing scene and that sort of thing and what we want to do is make three adjustments I'm going to adjust this door here we're going to adjust this woman's coat as she goes past again we're going to have to track this and we're going to adjust the actual taxi itself now, the main branding colors for this commercial is the red of the taxi. And as we move forward through the shot, you see this woman enters set wearing a coat with a bright red patch on the back. Now, I felt that was a little bit distracting from the branded colors here. So we're going to make a change to that and just change its hue. So let's move on to this node here labeled coat. And if we take a qualifier, we can grab a sample of the red there. Let's put the highlight on so we can see what we've grabbed. And let's just give that a little bit more of a tweak just to check we're getting the best out of it. Let's clean that up a little bit, bit of denoise. And you'll see that we've also picking up some other elements in the scene. So we need to obviously isolate this with a power window. So let's take the highlight off. And just to show you what we're going to do, we're going to start rotating the hue here to give us a better look. Just put that on. I'm just going to bring the saturation down a little bit. So something like that. But we're obviously affecting now the taxi, this sign up here and probably the pillar box. Yeah, so there's a pillar box here as well. Let me just fine tune this a little bit. Let's just see if we can get that a little bit better. Something like that. So I need a power window to isolate this so these other things aren't affected. So let's go to our window here. I'm gonna draw a shape. Okay, so we've now isolated the coat, so that's much better. I'm going to just bring the saturation down a little bit more on that. But obviously she's moving, so we need to have that power window move with her. And to do that, we need to go onto the tracker. So this is the tracker. You have uh, track forwards and track backwards. It will automatically start doing it straight away. You don't need to know anything about any of these other menus here. You can literally just press track forward and it will start tracking automatically. But just so you know, we are using a window tracker here. So there is also a stabilizer and there's also an effects tracker. We're only gonna look in this episode at the window tracker. So it's basically going to track the window that is currently active. So in here, you can have multiple windows and the one that's active is the one that is gonna be tracked. We're not tracking from the beginning of the shot because obviously she's not in the shot at that point. So we're going to track from this point here. So I'm going to need to track forwards and then I'm going to need to come back to this point and track backwards. So let's see what happens when we track forwards from here. So I'm just going to press the tracker and we're using what's called the cloud tracker. Now the cloud tracker is, is allowing Resolve to automatically pick tracking points for me within that window and giving me my best chance of getting a good track. Now the tracker in Resolve is fantastic, but I've purposefully chosen things that are gonna break because I want to show you how to fix them when the tracking doesn't go right. So let's track forwards. And there we go. So she gets a good point, but when we hit the lamppost, the tracker gets confused and it breaks. So in order to fix that, let's just come back to the point where she was good. It's around about here. So clip mode affects the whole clip, whereas frame affects just this frame in time. So what I'm gonna do is just make any adjustment I like on here, and that will automatically add a keyframe for me. And then I can move forward as many frames as I need to. So let's go to the very end of the shot. And what I'm gonna do is stay in frame mode, and I'm gonna move this over like so. And that has automatically added another keyframe for me. So Resolve now calculates the difference between this frame and this frame and does the work for me. So as I move forward frame at a time, we've now fixed that track. Okay, so we've now got a really good track through there. And if we go back to the point where we started tracking from, this frame here, we now need to obviously track in reverse so we can get her coming from off the scene. So if I just go back, you'll see, obviously that tracking, that window is not tracking at the minute. 
So let's go to here and I could manually keyframe that or we could just go to the clip and press reverse. And that still needs a bit of a hand. So I'm gonna to go to my frame mode here. Let's go a few more frames back. And then I'm just gonna take that off there. So you see it's added a keyframe for me automatically. Let's step through frame at a time, just check it's good. And there we go, we're good to go. So that's now fixed using frame mode. And just to be safe, I'm gonna put that back into clip mode, ready for our next shot. Okay, so the next thing we wanna change is this door. So I'm gonna click on this node here. And the orange of this door is not quite sitting well in the scene, so we're gonna just tweak that a little bit. Again, similar to what we did with the coat. And let's just find a frame where we've got the hole of the door in, there we go. And I'm gonna use a qualifier, exactly as we did before, put the highlight on, and just check that my qualification is good. Okay, something like that. I'm not gonna to spend too long doing this. And you can see it's also picking up the orange in the taxi sign there. So we need to obviously put a power window on this. So let's go to our window so that we isolate it. I'm gonna click on this rectangle window. Let's put the points on here. Now what I often do with these, when they've got softness built into them automatically, is I take the softness off and it really does help with the tracking. Let's take the softness down. and I can add it back on after. So once we've done, once we've got the tracking data, I can add that softness back on. Let's go to our tracker, and I'm gonna track forwards. So we're in window, we're on clip mode, so it's gonna analyze the entire clip, and let's go forward. Okay, so that's done a good job of that. Let's go to this point here and track backwards. Ah, so there we've got a problem. So it's been picked up by this moving coat, so that is not a very good track. So what we could do is keyframe it as we did before, but I wanna show you a different technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on these three dots, which is a tracker menu, and I'm gonna say reset the track data on the active window. So I've cleared all those tracking points away. And what we're actually gonna do is track a different part of the frame. So because this woman walks in front of the door, it ruins the track. So if we can find a part of the frame that moves exactly the same as the door, but doesn't have anyone crossing it, we should get a better track. So what I'm gonna do is go up to here, and I'm gonna track this sign instead so that we get good clean tracking data, which we can then apply to the door. And I'll show you how we do that. So I'm at the beginning of the frame. We're gonna press track forward. Okay, and then I'll come back to the beginning of the frame. And what I'm gonna do is realign that. And because we're in clip mode and not frame mode here, it's gonna to apply to the whole clip. We've already got the tracking data. And if I now press play, it's taken the tracking data from the sign, but we've just moved it down to the door. Now you see that's obviously got problems here because what's happening is we're getting data that we don't need in here, causing this frame to not look very good. So again, I'm gonna delete that tracking data. I go back to the beginning. And this time, what we're gonna do is the same track, but we're gonna take off some elements. So we're gonna take off 3D, we're gonna take off the rotation, and we're gonna take off the zoom. So all we're doing is taking tracking data for pan and tilt. So let's put this back on where it was. And this way we should get just the data that we want. And I'm gonna track forwards. And back to the beginning. Now let's apply that back to the door. I remember the reason we're putting a window around the door is so that we can change its color without affecting the light on the taxi. And let's play that through. So the tracking data it's just got, I'm just pressing play. I'm not hitting this track button, I'm just pressing play is now much, much better. So this door, this frame is not moving up the doors because we've taken off zoom, rotate, and 3D out of the equation. So now what I can do is adjust the color of the door quite happily. So let's go to our hue. And let's take a bit of the saturation out of that. I'd need to adjust my qualification a little bit better to get that out more accurate, but it's good enough for this. And I can even now go back to my window and put a soft edge on that if I want. And because we're in clip mode in the tracker, it applies to the whole clip, not just the frame. If I did that in frame mode, it would just put softness on at that frame. So that's another good way. So don't always track the object you want. You can track objects that are moving similarly and then just move the window later and the tracking data is already applied. So just before we get to the end of this episode, I just wanna take a minute and say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. I've got 4,000 subscribers now in under four months. So the channel's growing really quickly. I'm so pleased. 
And thank you each and every one of you. Thank you very much indeed. And hit the subscription button if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and hit the thumbs up. Apparently that does wonders for the algorithm for YouTube. And uh, let's have a look at the rest of the episode. So now we're going to take a look at the taxi. So I'm going to click on this node here, labeled taxi. And the first thing I want to do is put back on the parameters that we took off to get a good track on the door. So when I do my first track, I always have all five parameters on, see the quality of it, and then decide if I'm going to take one or two of them off. So what we're going to do on this one is adjust the red color. So again, we've got other red items in the scene. So we're going to have to isolate it with a window. So let's go ahead and grab a power window. I'm going to draw around the taxi. And I need to get a little bit tighter here because at the end of the scene, we go very near that pillar box. There, okay, so that's done. And what I'm going to do now is hit track forward. So we go to our tracker. And then I'm going to go back to here and track backwards. So let's take a look at that track. So if we go forward through here, you see it starts off well, and then it gets moved a little bit here. And you also find that it starts to come right out here when this couple walk into the shot. So we're gonna try and fix that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delete that tracking data. So we can click in here and say, reset track data. By the way, what you can also do in here is, you, if there's just a little bit that's gone wrong, you can actually highlight a section Click in here, so if this, imagine this was, uh, it, you saw sort of a big spike in here, so the tracking had gone off just for a little moment. You can select a selection, and then you can click in here, clear selected track data. And that actually just does an automatic keyframe from here to here. So it's quite a good way of just fixing little problems that you might get with the tracker. But in this case, we're gonna delete the whole track. So let's get rid of all that data. Let's go back, I'm gonna do it from the beginning this time. So my window is in pretty good shape there, but what I'm gonna do this time is go down to this interactive mode. So if I click on here, what we can actually do now is add points or remove points. So what I want to do is where this came right out when that couple walked into the shot, so just about here, you see this all stretched out over here. So what I'm gonna do is come back and I'm gonna just remove by just literally clicking on the screen. If I press now delete, all the crosshairs, all the tracking points that are inside this frame here will be deleted. So I'm just gonna basically exclude them from the track. So the only tracking points are gonna be more at the front of the taxi. So let's track that forward and see how that looks. And there we go. So we've got a much cleaner track there, much better on this side as well. And uh, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of tweaking here, but it's got us into a really good starting point. So I'm gonna flick over to frame mode. I remember now what it does is it just adjusts at the point I am. So let's start at the beginning. And I'm just playing that through. I'm not pressing forwards here, I'm just playing. And all's good. And just about here, we're starting to come over on top of the red. I'm trying to isolate the red here. So I'm just gonna do a little move. I'm just gonna add a point there. Again, it's creeping back in a little bit. So let's just pull it out a little bit there. And we're good. Now the only th other thing we have to watch is the back of the taxi. There's a bit of red here. So we need to just pull that out a little bit further. Let's just check that works for the whole shot. And yes, it does. So we've got all the red inside the window here. So that's good to go now. I'm gonna add a little bit of softness just in case. I always put a bit of softness on my windows. And let's just go to the end and just check that we're not bleeding over into this letterbox here. So we are just a little bit. So I'm just gonna adjust that again there. And I've also noticed here it's come back out again. So let's just check that we're on frame mode. And there we go. So that's good to go. Okay, so now we can go and make the adjustment to the red. So if I go to my qualifier and sample the red again, like we did with the coat and the door, let's just tweak that a little bit. I will do a dedicated episode on the qualifier so you can see in a bit more detail how I do this, but that will do for now. Let's take off the highlight and I'm just gonna increase the saturation and I'm just gonna lower the gamma a little bit just to make that a little bit more poppy. So I'm just pressing Command D to switch that node on and off. And you can see now that because of the power window around the outside, let's have a look at the power window, that we're not affecting this letterbox or this sign up here. So we've got a nice qualification. We've got it masked off with our power window and we've got it nicely tracked. So just to recap, to get better tracking, 
have a look at taking the soft edge off your power windows first, and then you can always add it back on after you've done the tracking. Uh, remember to be in clip mode to do that, so it applies to the whole clip and not just a single frame. Uh, go to frame mode to do sort of fine tuning and small detailed work like this, and the keyframes are applied automatically. Think about not using all five of these items if it's gonna cause you problems. So sometimes rotation or zoom might be causing you issues. Just switch them off. And think about using the interactive mode. So when you're down here, you can switch interactive mode on and select which part of the power window you want to be incorporated into the tracking. So remember, all these cloud points, the cloud tracker, are always inside your power window. So you can choose to not use certain parts of it. And finally, don't forget that you don't have to actually track the physical object you're trying to track. So when we did the door here, we had a problem tracking it because the woman walked in front of it. So what you can do is find something that's moving on a similar plane, like this uh, notice board up here, track that, the tracking data is then applied to the power window, and then you can readjust the shape of the power window using in clip mode, and the tracking data is stuck with that power window. So it'll reapply to the new position. And hopefully those tips will help you on the very rare occasion that Resolve doesn't give you a perfect track.